Jonathan Brooks still isn't suiting up for the Carolina Panthers. We'll tell you how to value him in your dynasty leagues next. You are locked on dynasty football, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Lockdown Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can bet $5 and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, just visit FanDuel.com to get started. Welcome back. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. And it's a Wednesday show, so of course that means Matt Williamson is here. You can follow him on Twitter at Williamson NFL. On today's show, we are answering your mailbag questions. Uh, and we got a couple of really good ones, starting with Jonathan Brooks, who still has not played for the Panthers yet this season. And now Chuba Hubbard has a contract extension. So Matt, this one comes from James. He wants to know, what are you guys doing with Jonathan Brooks moving forward? Yeah, it's a tough one because I really like the player in terms of talent and they must have two on draft. They traded up for a running back to become the first one off the board. Um, they have a, a buy this upcoming week, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So I assume we'll see Brooks on the other side of the buy and have a better feel for him the rest of the way. Now, I think you can't have this conversation without talking about Chuba. And frankly, Chuba is a much better football player than I ever envisioned him. I mean, I thought he'd be a, a lifetime backup, so so. And I know some people rolled their eyes when they extended him. You know, this team needs everything. Why would you invest in a back? Well, I think actually I kind of condone the move. And here's the reason why is you have to build some goodwill and some faith in that locker room that when somebody, one of your own does something well, you reward them. Even if it's a running back that are quote replaceable, even if Brooks is on the, you know, sitting there waiting his turn, you at least have to start to build some kind of culture of we're going to invest in our own that do the things that were expected of them. And Maybe they envision a Lions-like backfield. I mean, obviously, they're a long way from being the Detroit Lions, but they invested heavily in guards and the offensive. There's some young pieces on offense that you could at least get slightly excited about for the long term. And I also think that having a quality backfield for a young, struggling quarterback is more important than it is for Pat Mahomes or you know Joe Burrow or somebody like that. But I'm dancing around the question, you know, like, what do we do for Brooks in Dynasty? I don't know. I, I, I really don't. I mean, I'm not dumping him sight unseen in the leagues that I drafted him, and that's plenty. I was excited about him then. Um, I would probably consider putting out a light offer for him now, but he's probably a long way away from being startable in fantasy. Kate, what do you do? I, I mean, because this is this is one of the more difficult situations. It's not just that Hubbard got a long term extension; he's also looked awesome. He's third yeah, he's in, the NFL in rushing yards on a crap team. Like he's playing well above expectations. What are you doing here? I think you just have to hold. Like I think you have to be really, really, really patient. Um, looking at Chuba Hubbard's contract, like not. Um, not something they could escape over the 2024, 2025 seasons. Uh, Spotrack has them listed as a potential out in 2026 when his dead cap falls down to 4.5 million um, and they can rack up a decent bit of savings from moving on. So like, I do agree. Maybe this is a good, like good faith kind of move for the organization. Um, you outlined all those reasons, Matt, why that could be a positive a net positive for the locker room, even if it's not a net positive for the pocketbook. And I think there's probably something there. Like, yes, I, I don't have any expectations for Jonathan Brooks to take over this backfield this year. Um, but I do think you have to realistically lower your expectations for a ceiling that has both Chuba Hubbard, who has been acknowledged for his success here in the 2024 season. Um, 
Like, as long as he is there, they paid him. They're not just going to send him to, to the bench because second round rookie Jonathan Brooks, no matter how much I liked him coming out of the draft, and no matter how much I thought he was the most balanced prospect in this class, like, it doesn't matter. It what mm -hmm. it matters how they're constructing their team, and that seems to be on a two back system. So, I headed into this season without expectations for Brooks to take the field immediately. Still had him ranked as a top twelve dynasty running back. I think you just have to dial it back a bit. So, Matt, I want to ask you about some trades that have happened on Dynasty League football regarding Jonathan Brooks over the last couple of weeks. And you just tell me kind of where you're leaning here. So okay. we've got several different types of moves. Straight up running back for running back, Jonathan Brooks for Tony Pollard. Hmm. I think I'd rather go with Brooks. I mean, uh, on a generic team that uh, okay. certainly different if I'm making a playoff run, of course, I can see a move like that if you're a contender. But if I'm an upstart generic team, I think I'll roll with Brooks. Middle of the pack team. Kate, how do you feel? Yeah. Yeah, uh, same philosophy. It just depends on where you're headed in terms of your your thing. If you're rebuilding, absolutely Jonathan Brooks, no questions asked. Um, but if I'm a contender, most likely Tony Pollard. Now he's dealing with some health issues too. So um, TBD on what his long term outlook like look like this year specifically. But um, I, I'm still leaning Brooks generally. All right, Matt, I got three different wide receiver trades. Uh, okay. Jonathan Brooks for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Jonathan Brooks for Brandon Ayuk. Jonathan Brooks for Keon Coleman. I think I definitely want Ayuk. I lean towards JSN. I lean towards Coleman. So if you would like to go out and get Jonathan Brooks right now, and if you could send one of those receivers that maybe you grabbed in the late – round one of your rookie draft. Like you know, I'll give you another one. We saw Xavier worthy was being drafted at like nine, 10 overall, and even in super flex leagues this year, would you trade Xavier worthy for Jonathan Brooks right now? I'd rather Brooks. Okay. I'm very unimpressed with worthy in every rookie draft. I had Brooks ahead of worthy and I feel as strong, although both their circumstances have changed dramatically. So I'm looking at our little, thing on the side it looks like the next segment's t higgins would you rather yeah. have t higgins or jonathan brooks 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 pretty okay. easily for me yeah. really okay what about you matt uh let's talk about it next segment with okay. higgins right, but i tease. i do think he's i think it's a conversation but i would probably okay. lean towards brooks too i mean uh, you think's important last one because i think this is fascinating uh, let's say it's an early second round pick. Let's say a, a pick that's projected 13, 14, 15. Would you trade an early second round pick for Jonathan Brooks right now, knowing that this upcoming running back class is sick? I don't think so. I mean, if it's like a top 15 pick, a top 17 pick, I don't think so. But if it's maybe 16, 17, 18 in that neighborhood, mid second round, probably. I have a hunch, hunch, Marcus, that you know this running back class better than I do, but I know it's really good. But we I could also have six know that, running backs drafted inside the top fifty this year. But they're not going to be there at sixteen or the middle of the second round of a no. But they, yeah, but I mean, you're going to go be first round get, probably, right? Probably. I mean, because this class doesn't have the quarterbacks like in a super flex league, right? That's going to push those running backs down the way that. Jonathan Brooks was pushed out in this year's draft, right? Mm -hmm. Even coming off a, a torn ACL, we saw Brooks going routinely at 8, 9, 10 because of quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends. How it's about the wide receiver of, class? How's 2025 looking? It seems uh, average, right? Yeah, average. I wouldn't say anything near what we saw last year, but you're still going to get probably four guys that go on your side, your top 14 of your rookie drafts. I went Brooks then. Okay. So you're, you're willing to trade an early second round pick for Brooks. Uh, and one of the things that would be in your favor here, Matt, is he doesn't have a lot of work on him from college either. Like he mm -hmm. was behind Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson. And obviously he's not going to have a lot of work on his body this year. He does have the knee injury, but you could be looking at a 22 year old running back that has like 350 combined touches in the NFL and in college. Yeah. Maybe there's a chance by 2025, he just looks awesome, and this turns into a committee. And then by 2026, it's his backfield. 
I thought he was really attractive in rookie draft time of time frame. And obviously he's done nothing to hurt his own stock, but his stock is still dropped nonetheless. But I still I, I know Carolina's dreadful and they're really, really bad. But I do have a little bit of hope for the offense. Bryce Young aside, I don't know where he's gonna be, but I he's think this better. lot these look better. They've won two in a row. I mean, I think the offensive line is Average to above average, and maybe Coker and Leggett and Sanders can turn into a young core that you can kind of count on, you know? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, so, so I think we're all in agreement that we're not telling you to go out and buy Jonathan Brooks, but don't be afraid to send out an offer or so just to see where the dynasty manager is with Brooks right now after 10 games. Uh, all right, let's talk about T. Higgins, who is expected to become a free agent in 2025. What does his free agent outlook look, look like? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. And this is a great week to start betting on the NFL. We've got some awesome games, including a great Thursday night matchup between the Eagles and the Commanders. Uh, for first place in the NFC East. We've got some divisional games, including the Steelers and Ravens at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday. It should be a great week in the NFL. Go visit FanDuel.com to start betting on all the NFL action. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members in billions of dollars in award winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less than at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action in sports on most states, including California. Florida, Georgia, and Texas. It's also the only real money daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Go download the Price Picks app today. Use promo code Lots on NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Again, download the app today. Use promo code Lockdown NFL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Price picks run your game. Welcome back to the Lockdown Dynasty Football Podcast. We are answering your mailbag questions. This next one comes from Jared. He wants to know how should I be valuing T Higgins, T Higgins, knowing that he is a free agent in twenty twenty five, Matt. I mean, he's been tough because the last this year and last year, he's missed so much time. But I also think part of that, and this sounds rough, but what motivation does he have to really put himself on the line for the Bengals this year? You know, I mean, if his he's, contract's fully guaranteed, like he's, yeah, his I mean, he's, he's, he's questionable. Or, eh, maybe I'll wait another week. And I don't know. I kind of just still think the best is yet to come for him. And what I did was I looked at, teams in the top half of available cap space for next year. We all know that can change people, you know, teams yeah. can cut people. I came up with six teams that I think would be logical fits for them that have some money. And when I did it, I, I, I think that most of these teams are pretty attractive landing spots for a dynasty situation. New England. I mean, he would probably be the one in New England with a good yeah. young quarterback. I, I think that would be a really good fit. Vegas has a ton of money. I don't like that at all, but I also think they have bigger fish to fry and probably wouldn't be in that market. Washington would be tremendous. I mean, mm -hmm. I can see that. They have a lot of money. The Chargers would be tremendous. I think that they also have a lot of money. 
Who's the offensive coordinator with the Chargers next year? Because I don't, I would never recommend anybody going to play in a Greg Roman offense. If you're I hear what you're receiver. saying. I hear what you're saying. But <laughs> I do ahead, think sorry. they add a prominent receiver somehow. Yeah. You know, and maybe it's not him. Maybe it's first round pick. Who knows? What about Denver? I mean, it's not mm-hmm. super exciting, but he'd go right past Sutton if Sutton's still there. And I think Nix is improving. And then a super long shot, Kate, is the Steelers. Uh, it's not really their move, but they could do it if they wanted. So, I don't know, four of those spots, I think, would increase his value, or at least you'd be happy about it as an owner. Kate, what do you think? I'm going to be honest. Uh, coming into this segment, I was kind of just a big hell no, um, just mm-hmm. on all fronts. What scares me is that this is kind of like this same recurring string of soft tissue injuries. I agree. Like maybe there's not a ton of incentive for T Higgins to come back and put his body on the line and like rehab the injury only to risk further aggravating an injury. And then you really put your overall, you know, value in the free agent market on, on notice, right? Like there might be some more, uh, tactical moves that are being made than just straight up like, is he healthy? Is he not? Could he play if he, you know, were in a different circumstance, etc.? Um, but what might have just swayed my opinion was a look at the number of teams who could benefit from his services. And mm-hmm. you outlined several spots where I think he could step in and be a logical number one or a 1A to Terry McLaurin's, you know, 1A. Like there are a lot of very intriguing scenarios where T. Higgins can finally become the wide receiver one that we've all kind of been waiting to see him become and we know he has a skill set to become so i you might have kind of swayed me out of my hell no into uh maybe maybe i mean a lot of them are the first round quarterbacks that are looking kind of good you know may and nicks and daniels and you know that's not terrible to grow i mean if i was a gm i would love to get one of those young promising quarterbacks a solid veteran established receiver uh, Matt, I'm going to give you another team that I think could be in the market. I, I, actually, I'll give you two. I think T. Higgins is going to attract basically all sorts of teams in the NFL because you're going to have contenders that are like trying to go for it, that mm-hmm. are willing to give him a bunch of money up front uh, to try, like Detroit. Uh, Matt, Detroit's got $61 million of cap space next I year. I almost wrote them down. Yeah. yeah. Could they try to rent T. Higgins for two years and just really go for this? What about the Jags, right? Uh, reunite him with Trevor Lawrence, who we played with at Clemson. And now just your two receivers going forward are Brian Thomas and T. Higgins. And you have two monsters on the outside. My fear with him is what Kate mentioned. He's missed 35% of the available snaps throughout his career with Cincinnati. Like he is just not a super durable receiver. Mm-hmm. And I understand the concerns this year. And there's reasons why he shouldn't be out there if he's feeling anything in his hamstring or in his quad. But I do worry, like, as you get older, it's harder and harder to come back from these soft tissue injuries. It just seems like this could be a buyer beware situation for me. Yeah, I hear you. I almost wrote down Carolina as well. Clemson guy, you know, I mean, he'd be their immediate number one, help a young quarterback, assuming Young's the guy. Obviously, we have some time between now and the end of the season to evaluate Higgins. But I think I'd be more of a buyer right now while he is banged up. Yeah. Because never forget the dynasty cycle. You know, Ryan McDowell and I used to talk about this a ton. A great time to sell a player is the day he signs with a new team. Correct. You know what I mean? That day is definitely coming for Higgins, whether it's a monster deal or he's coming off not a great season. But there will be a spike sometime in the free agent you know, cycle, obviously probably very early in the cycle, where you can probably get your investment back if not more. Matt, I'm going to make a prediction right now. It is November 13th. I think T Higgins is going to end up being the highest paid wide receiver in the league by the time we get to March, because you look at all of these teams that have a ton of cap space. I I, I think I just looked it up. There Mm -hmm. were 14 teams that had 60 or more million dollars in cap space this year. Yeah, there's a lot lot of those teams need wide receivers. And this is not a great free agent class coming up. Mm-hmm. I just wouldn't be surprised if we get into a bidding war where you have Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, the Raiders who have a bunch of cap space, 
all these New teams, England's the one I keep coming back to. New England, right? Yeah. And I think New England, we saw this like with, with the Brandon Ayuk saga. Like they were willing to go way above and beyond what anybody else was offering Brandon Ayuk to try to get him to come to, to New England. Could the Patriots say, okay, you know what, Brandon Ayuk, or sorry, T. Higgins, here's $36 million a year. Come play with our young quarterback. We know we're overpaying, but we have no choice. We have to get weapons around Drake May. I could see a scenario like that playing out as well. I could as well, and then he sounds like the perfect Jacksonville Jaguar hire. Or you know, you sign him, and then you're cutting him in two years because you gave him way too much money. Like he's good, he's not great. You know, I yep. mean, if it gets to that point in the NFL stand, you know, way of looking at things, not the dynasty way of looking at things, I think that team will regret it greatly. You know, I mean, he's not AJ Brown. You know, I mean? right? But the thing is, is it still could he- happen. But if he gets that contract, there's going to be a lot of excitement. Like, oh, he's the highest oh, paid yeah. receiver. That's when you sell him, right? So, hundred percent. I, I think I agree with you. Now is the time to buy, and then let's just see where the landscape is here in the next couple of months when mm-hmm. it comes to T. Higgins. You um, might get some valuable weeks out of him the rest of this yeah. year, you know, and then he signs way too much of a, a bigger, bigger contract than he deserves. Dump him for a future first or whatever, yeah. you know. All right, it's a Steelers show, so of course we have to talk about Najee Harris because we can't talk about the Steelers. I mean, Matt even brought up the Steelers when it came to T. Higgins, which to me actually feels like a Steeler move. You grab somebody inside the division, you know. Let's talk about Najee Harris, who is a free agent in 2025, and what we expect from him next. This episode is brought to you by Ultimate Pro Football GM. Hey, football fans, remember our great partner, Ultimate Pro Football GM. Well, they're back, and they've added an amazing new game mode that we need to tell you about. The game that has you step in the shoes of a football franchise GM and lead it to glory now has a new head coach career mode. So on top of building your dynasty staff, uh, by, dynasty by drafting players, signing free agents, hiring coaches, Now you get to call offensive plays during the game. And if you already have the game installed, be sure to update it so you have all the new game modes and all the new features. And if you don't have it yet, download it right now. It's a must-have for all football fans. I love it, and I know that you will as well. Ultimate Pro Football GM is completely free. It has no ads, and it's 100% playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want to and when you want to. And here's a special offer for Lockdown fans. Use the promo code Lockdown NFL, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your franchise. Make sure to get it as this perk will jumpstart your play and give you the advantage you'll want in creating a dynasty. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com, ultimate-gm.com, or look it up at the app stores. Ultimate Pro Football GM, start your dynasty today. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out the new Locked On NFL show. Two shows every single day. One in the morning with Tyler Rowland. One in the afternoon with Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. Available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, man. I want to ask you about Najee Harris, who I think pretty clearly is the top running back that is expected to hit the free agent market next year. Uh, we do have Aaron Jones and J.K. Dobbins, a lot of the same names that we had last year, just without Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen with Najee Harris? Because I think he is one of the guys that we could see a massive increase in value if he lands in the right spot. So let's talk about the fifth-year option situation. I mean, first off, I don't know if all our listeners realize the less and less fifth-year options are getting picked up. And frankly, I think it's kind of a goofy role that Mm -hmm. the date that you have to decide to pick up the fifth year option is really early. You know, I mean, so if by chance you pick up someone's fifth year option, they get hurt in week one. It's a terrible move for you. So I think that was a big concern. He's been super durable, super reliable, but he's a running back that has a lot of wear and tear. I wouldn't have picked up his fifth year option either. And everyone around here is like, why wouldn't you? It's not that expensive. You're going to be on the hook for more next year. It's only six million. I'm like, well, it's a great rookie class. I mean, I knew that at that point too. Yeah. You know, you can always get one in the third round. That's probably his equal. And what if he gets hurt? You know, you're on the hook. And so it doesn't make a ton of sense. Plus if the Steelers were to resign him, his cap hit next year, would probably be under the six million that you picked up. You know, it would it would there would be inflation involved after that. 
But speaking of inflation, someone, Steelers or not, will give him a Ramondre Stevenson type of contract, maybe 10% more, something like that. I mean, maybe 10 to 12 Chula million. Hubbard contract. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I'm his agent, I'm doing that. But to your point, if I'm him and I'm his agent, I don't think I'm signing a hometown discount. You know, I'd love to be on the market and be the top player at my position and three or four teams call. So I give him maybe a 30% chance of being a Steeler next year. He's also kind of an odd dude, by the way. He is a little bit. Um, let me ask you this, Matt. Do you believe that he is going to be a better fantasy asset on most teams outside of Pittsburgh? No, because they run the ball so much and yeah. they look for the physical big chain, you know, Jerome Bettis, you know, yeah. uh, he's their style of player. And frankly, I think he's having his best season as a pro, to be honest with you, too. The only reason I hesitate is he was a really good receiver at Bama. Yeah. And you watch him in practice. He has like unusually long arms and has this huge catching radius and really excels catching over his head, away from his body, even running some wide receiver routes. But they don't ever do that with him. You know, maybe the new team will throw him the ball more. The year he caught a ton of passes was his rookie year when Ben just wanted to get it out of his hands. You know, yeah. dump, it, dump it off, dump it off, dump it off. I mean, that's not real. Kate, what do you think? Um, I It does feel kind of increasingly unlikely, though, that – you know, Najee returns to the Steelers in the coming years. Like, I think if you're going to get a long-term deal with him done, like it kind of feels like, especially with the Chuba Hubbard contract, especially with the Ramondre Stevenson contract, it feels like the door has kind of slammed shut in that, that regard. That's not to say that the Steelers don't have money, but I think they're, you know, I, I think, the market feels like it's been a little bit reset over the past year, uh, especially with the amount of money that running backs commanded in free agency just this past cycle. Um, and the fact that, again, this is a, a free agent cycle that Najee is kind of like by far, I think, a tier above the rest of the playmakers in this this group. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the Steelers are going to match that contract unless it is one of these moves of good faith and they feel like, you know, they have the luxury to do so. But then again, I look at the amount of volume that he's received. Um, I, I look at the fact that, like, he is such a good fit for the AFC North in terms of that physical brand of football. Um, he's one of these guys that, month over month throughout the season historically in his career he gets powerful and more powerful and and continues to wear on opposing defenses like he feels like such a good fit in this current situation that i'm having trouble projecting what he might look in a different scenario where he's not getting 15 plus carries a game because i think that's part of his brand of football so here's my prediction, Kate and Matt. I think Najee is going to sign with a team that has a young quarterback it, because I think whatever uh -huh. team, let's use the Raiders. The Raiders right now have $112 million of cap space going into next year. They're drafting a quarterback in round one. I don't know if this is a surprise to anybody. They're going to be drafting a quarterback. So you want to pair him with a, with a running back that can play on all three downs, that can grind out the tough yardage, that can help you in pass pro, it can that can be an adequate receiver, and I think if they have Shadour Sanders, it's, it would be nice to have somebody like Najee Harris to help ease him into that workload. I don't know what that means for his fantasy value, but I do. I get the sense that Pittsburgh would like to bring him back, but they're probably not going to be able to afford him. Not for the sense of like they don't have the money, but I don't think they're going to be able to match a deal where he gets three years for thirty-five million or anything like that. Do you agree, Matt? Yeah, I, I tend to think if I was Omar Khan, I would rather roll with Cordero Patterson, Jalen Warren, and a big third round pick than three years, $35 million. So let me throw it right back at you because I think I know your answer. If you're Dallas's GM, would you consider no. it? No, I didn't think so, right? They, they've got <laughs> yeah, I knew $4 million answer, yeah. of cap space and 150 needs. So, no, like, and right. again, in this class, I think you can find a I don't want to say a better player, but a, a similar player to Najee Harris on day two. 
Mm-hmm. And with Najee already being 26 years old, already having a bunch a of a lot of wear and tear, and he's older than you think. Yeah. I think you're better off just to spend the draft pick there. It'd be really nice if you didn't trade a pick for Jonathan Mingo. You could just draft the running back in the fourth round. But <laughs> I do think, let me give you two destinations that I think would actually kind of make sense in my head and that I do think would increase Najee's overall value in Dynasty. The LA Chargers, who have established sure. their brand of football right out of the gate, um, sure. don't have that established running back. They don't have you know, Gus Edwards, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they have Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins in the 2025 season. Um, But we know their identity is physical run game with, you know, those explosive moments in the passing game, Uh, kind of something similar to what the Steelers are, are building and a system that Najee has kind of excelled in this year. And then there's the Washington commanders uh, getting a, guy like Najee Harris playing with a quarterback who's very capable in the run. Um, Like I, I love Brian Robinson, but you know, he's coming toward the end of his rookie contract. Like what if you brought Najee Harris in as this kind of three down back who can do a little bit of everything and play alongside a rushing quarterback to kind of open things up. It almost reminds me of a kind of dynamic that you could have between like a Lamar Jackson and right like Jeff that would Sewell, be yeah. something I, I, to behold Najee's gonna get a lot of money in free agency because he's mm-hmm. by far the best running back available he's the youngest um so I expect teams like Washington like the Raiders like the Chargers all to be interested because they've got a ton of, ton of cap space and he fits that is it one last nugget on him oh. one, 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 scouting Go report on. stuff I talked about him as a receiver and we all have mentioned three down running back I don't know if he's the legal view him that way or not, though. You know, I mean, it's easy to say, yeah, we're giving him twelve million, but will be will he be out there on third and eight for the Raiders? I don't know. Well, you know, he's I a can't good pass blocker, that. though. That, very, I think that's, very. And I think that's probably why some of these teams with young quarterbacks would want him is because yes, be really he's really nice to have. He's reliable. He doesn't fumble. It'd be nice to have a guy out there that you can trust in big spots, not to go out and get a 30 yard catch in third and eight, but to like Mm -hmm. make sure your quarterback doesn't get killed by a blitzing linebacker. Right. (laughs) Yeah. He's not Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey though. No, right. That's still valuable to have that trait in your, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. in your offense. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making locked on dynasty football. Your first listen every single day, go check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Maju. Follow Matt at Matt or at Williamson NFL. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.